Hey, what's going on? Today we're gonna to take a look at the brand new Godox MS series line of flashes. And that's all coming up, right? Now. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Kyle here, helping you level up your photo, video, and music. And if you're into any of those things like I am, definitely consider clicking that subscribe button and that bell icon so you can keep track of everything that I'm up to. So, today I have the Godox MS 300. In the MS series line of flashes, there's basically two models that just came out. The MS 300, it's 300 watts, and the MS 200, which is 200 watts. They are very intriguing and they serve a very, very important purpose, in my opinion. I'm going to get into that later. So what we're going to do today is an unboxing. We're going to see everything that comes in the box. Obviously, I've already filmed that unboxing. And then we're going to talk about some of the technical specs and my initial impressions of this flash, because I think it, it solves and it fills a very important role in the Godox line of flashes. Before we get to the actual unboxing, I wanna talk about what I see as the main value props that Godox is offering in the MS series line of flashes. First is an affordable entryway into studio strobe photography. Now this is not like a, a speed light. This is not something that somebody is gonna be able to use all the time. You kind of have to have a, you know, a controlled environment to use these things and that can be daunting to some folks. So having an affordable entryway, I think is gonna be a great thing for Godox, uh, you know, in this price range. The second thing is everything I just said, alongside the Godox X wireless system. If you've watched any of my other Godox videos, then you know that I'm a big fan of the way Godox products talk to each other. I think it's really important when you have a universe kind of ecosystem of products. It's something that Godox does really, really well and I've been very happy with it. And they promise that this is gonna be able to be triggered by everything else in the Wireless X system. So in the unboxing, I went ahead and tested it with a speed light as well as a X Pro trigger, and you'll see the results in the unboxing. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that unboxing. Alrighty. We are unboxing the Godox MS Series Studio Flash. Warranty card, manual. Godox is really bad at manuals, so we're gonna have to look at that. A cleaning kit, looks like there's gloves and some cloth and stuff like that to clean, uh, to clean the glass. A big, long cable because this is not a wireless flash. This is a studio strobe that is powered, AC powered. No capacitor or external box or anything. This goes straight into the back of the flash. So I like that it comes with a nice long power cable as opposed to having to need to bother with the extension cords and the like. Okay, so we have two extra fuses in case you blow the one that's uh, ostensibly installed. I'm hoping that I don't have to install one out the jump. Okay, this looks like a modeling lamp. Here is the strobe itself. Strobe, monolight, however, whatever you wanna call it. Let's go ahead, immediately, this is an all plastic construction, so you know, the, the, the price tag on this is, is re it's definitely affordable. So the fact that it is a all plastic construction doesn't necessarily bother me. You get a lot of power and a lot of functionality out of this for a really low price. So, uh, you know, you just got to be all that much more careful with it, you know, as you use it. So moving on, looks like we have our little latch right here. And there is our flash element and where we install the uh, the modeling lamp. This is the first time I've ever looked at this equipment, so this is definitely going to be, you know, good first impressions. I do like the design thus far. The plastic is 
uh, it does feel sturdy. I'm guessing that there's a pretty decent frame inside. There is this one little break in the plastic that kind of feels a little bit, uh, you know, I can feel a little bit more given there, but that's about it. I'll, overall, I'm impressed for a plastic, for a plastic enclosure. Okay. Let's look at the side, nothing here. On the top, we have our optical sensor where this strobe is, can be optically triggered and nothing on this side. We do have some, some vents uh, to, to get that warm air out. On the bottom, uh, not much here, except we have our mount here. I'm trying to see how we are able to, to, to move it. There's a button. Okay, this is loose. So on this mount, we have a, a pretty heavy duty. I mean, it seems nice and solid. I'm, I'm not able to, to wriggle it around. There's not a whole lot of play in there. We do have the little push button here, which is going to allow you to, even if there's some kit right here that's blocking you from being able to get a full rotation out of this, let's loosen this up. Uh, you can turn it and let's just say, pretend something's right here blocking it. You would push down on this, spin it around, and then you'd be able to catch it again and repeat that process. You can hear that click right there. Um, so you can still tighten this down to, which is the, you know, the pitch and the yaw, uh, the mount here, even if there's something blocking it. Okay. And then this, very simple locking mechanism. You can see it in there. There is a metal insert in there. So if you do have, uh, you know, a, a, a metal mount, it's it's not going to eat away at the plastic. That's nice. I mean, if you're going to have some metal in there, that's definitely a good place. You're going to get a lot of wear right there. As far as the mechanism here, it is it, it's definitely locked. Um, I had to loosen it quite a bit. And I can tell that, that there are, and you can definitely hear it and see it, different uh, kind of indexes here. But it's a relatively good range of motion. I guess it's almost 180 degrees. Not that you would ever use that position right there, because you'd be basically uh, flashing straight down. It's kind of hard to see we have a little hole for, you know, an umbrella rod. Let's take a peek at the actual back of this and, you know, before we go ahead and boot it up. So we have a dial. The dial also appears to have a little button function, channel group button, S1, S2 modes. Uh, looks like a volume button. This looks like modeling lamp, a trigger button to test. And we have a USB and, uh, what looks to be a 2.5 millimeter sink jack, and then finally our fuse and power. So, and then obviously we have our little LCD screen right here. Give that a turn, very carefully open that up. And there is our flash element. I don't know if it's gonna be a huge problem, depending on the power of this and the type of uh, glass it is. You don't wanna get fingerprints on there. The fingerprints can get on there and that oil can then burn uh, in, the, in that fingerprint fashion. Then you're gonna have kind of a dull spot on the element. So it's just good ne never to touch it. It doesn't look like this is gonna be super easy to replace. I can't see anything that indicates that I can kind of pull up. I'm not gonna pull up on it. Um, I can't really see another area to kind of open up the housing. So I don't know how easy this would be to replace. I mean, it's basically, you know, a regular bulb treatment. And now let's go ahead and lock that up for now. Okay. I feel much safer with it like that. All right. So now turning it back over, let's go ahead, plug this into some power and see what we're working with. And by the way, I do like this little handle back here on. So I just changed my settings on my camera. It might be look a little bit darker, but you should be able to see the, uh, the, the screen ultimately better here. There is a little diagram from channel one to 16 that gives you dip switches. And if you're unfamiliar with what dip switches are, they help you program channels on analog flashes. What that tells me is that this is able to very easily be incorporated into uh, groups of flashes with, with, with older flashes. And so that's really nice that it's, like, it's literally right there. And so all I have to do is look at that diagram and copy it. 
I have a, whoop, it already, it works. Whoa, I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna burn that paper. And you can see as I change the dial on this, it's gonna, it automatically matches. So that's really great. I'm just really right out of the box. And that's one of the things that I love about Godox. You, you really don't have to, to fiddle with it or fudge it. Ooh, that's warm. I didn't think about that. <laughs> that was a mistake to have it on with this plastic. So it's actually super hot right now. That was super dumb. <laughs> do not do what I just did, kids. So with the radio turned off, we can optically fire this in slave one or slave two mode. Slave one meaning every pop uh, that it sees from the optical, uh, the optical sensor, it's going to fire the flash. And then S2 is every other. That's used for if you have a camera that uses a pre-flash. All right, so it's gonna be very hard. To, uh, it's gonna be almost indiscernible. Let me actually take this off here. And I should not have been looking directly into that. <laughs> so it did fire. Uh, so that is optically triggering the flash. Let's try one last thing. Let's go like this. We'll go uh, group A channel one here. And now I'm going to use the Godox V1 as a commander to, to fire this. It's just the last test here. I can see as I change on the the Godox V1 as a commander, the settings are changing. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and turn this bad boy off and unplug it. And there is one final thing that we get to do. Oh yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that unboxing. I certainly did. There was a lot of you know, me being pleasantly surprised at what, what I found when I unboxed it. Now, the only thing I can say about the unboxing is that there was one thing I thought that the package was kind of missing, which is just a regular reflector. Now, there were, they were probably going for, hey, this has a Bowens mount. You can buy any kind of light modifier you want to put, to put on there. So to save money, we're not gonna get, give you a reflector, you can buy it separately. And I think that that's the right way to go with this type, you know, where, what the goal for this product is. But if I was to say anything that was missing, it's a reflector. I don't use them all that much. I mean, I'm, I'm using one on my hair light right now, but it's not that big of a deal. So it's a simple unit, and I think that it accomplishes what it aims to accomplish very well. Again, that's at first glance. I still have some more testing to do, take some headshots and some, some stuff in this controlled studio. Ultimately, I think pending some of that live kind of in-field testing, that this thing is good. There's not a whole lot to this unit. You know, it's simple, it's certainly affordable and you get what you pay for and that, you know, it's light on feature, but what else do you want it to do? You want it to like make a sandwich for you? No. This runs for the MS300, $110 US, and for the MS200, $100 US. I just checked those on Amazon. If you wanna see current pricing, I'll have links in the description down below. With those price ranges, I'm actually super confused. I did not know that they were gonna be that close together. The power rating, the guide numbers, the price, it, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit too close. Why would you even have them that? I feel like you should make, maybe like 150 watts instead of a 200 watt and a 300 watt because, I mean, why wouldn't you pay an extra $10 to get the slightly the, the slightly more powerful version? So at any rate, those are the prices. I don't see why you would go for the MS200, but let's just stick with the, the MS300 uh, for this. So $110 for an entry level studio strobe with virtually everything you need as far as a flash. You're still gonna to need to get light modifiers, you're gonna to need to get light stands and things of that nature, and you're gonna to have to get a way to trigger the darn thing. So, you know, this is not your only expense if you wanna get into studio uh, strobe photography, but as far as like the end item, I think that it's an excellent price. It accomplishes what it promises. I'm obviously gonna go ahead and do the full infield testing. So if you haven't done so yet, definitely click subscribe so you can catch that video when I finally come out with it. So with that, that is everything that I can say about this flash before I do all of my testing. If you have any questions, definitely send them to me in the comment section. And if you do go ahead and decide to pick up the MS300 or 200 for that matter, please consider using my affiliate links in the description down below. 
And if you like this video, let me know by clicking that thumbs up icon. And if you didn't, you, know, you can click the other ones, whatever, I don't know, whatever. Whatever, I don't even care. So until next time, cheers.